Hello, this is Martin Brennan, Product Manager of Imagineer Systems, and welcome to this quick guide on how Mocha can assist the Adobe After Effects Face Tracker. The Face Tracker, introduced into After Effects CC 2015, is a great little tool focused on capturing motion in faces for masking and driving animation in another tool called Adobe Character Animator. The Face Tracker is great for tracking features in shots where the face is pointed mostly at the camera, and is also a very nice shortcut for getting a face outline quickly. Aside from being focused specifically on faces, there are some limitations of course, and this is where Mocha can really help. So let's take a look. Okay, so here we have a shot from Pond5, and what we're going to do is track this guy's face with the new face tracker. So we come up to our spline tool, and we just go ahead and draw a mask around his face using the pen tool. And I'm just drawing it to cover his facial features. We could draw a few more points, or we could draw less points. The main thing is, is that it covers the main facial features. So if I go ahead and track this now, we can see down here in the tracking panel, we've got the method for face tracking outline only and face tracking detailed features. And I'm gonna choose face tracking outline only and start to track forwards. So when we click, you'll see the spline automatically adjust to attach to his face. And you'll see that it comes around the edge nicely, it hits his chin, hits the jaw here nicely, and then follows along his forehead. And you can see it's actually added more points and then smoothed them out so that it gets a nice curve around his face. So for a quick mask, it's actually done quite a nice job here. It's completely automated and you just have to draw a basic spline to get that face tracked. When we actually start to work with the mask though for visual effects, we do run into some interesting issues. So let's take a look at that now. So let's just go ahead and duplicate this layer and we'll delete that mask. So now we have a mask layer over the top of the original source. And let's just go ahead and apply a simple levels to his face. And because he's looking a bit pasty, we're just going to up some of this just to darken down the skin just a little bit and get some of the shadows into the eyes there a little bit. So even without playing back, we can automatically see a little bit of a problem here. We've got this patch of skin that is not being covered by the face tracker. And as I play it back, you can actually see that spline is moving around a lot. And that's going to look very unnatural when we actually come to do the final composite. So what we need to do is address what the mask hasn't been able to track. Because even though we've got this manipulatable spline, we've got also a keyframe on every frame from doing the spline track. So this means that if I scrub my timeline, that shape is just going to pop back. So we're going to have to readjust on every frame and it's going to get jittery and not look great. So let's just undo that. So instead, what we're going to do is take those shot into Mocha, track his face correctly, and then add the remaining mask back to his face for a complete composite. So let's try that now. Now obviously we could do this inside Mocha Pro, Mocha Plus, or Mocha AE, but because I'm in After Effects already, we'll just go straight up to animation and choose track in Mocha AE. So now that we're inside the software, we can see we've got our in and out points here, so we'll just expand those out. So we've got our zero to 70 frames that we were using. And we're gonna go ahead and track his face. So I only really care about his forehead where the face tracker didn't quite get enough space. So I'm gonna go ahead and just track that area. I'm gonna draw a tracking spine just around the edge of his face here. So let's just draw around his edge here. We'll grab his eyes as well, just to add a little bit more tracking detail. And we'll just smooth that out. So let's just go ahead and put that into place. And we'll put that in a little bit there to get the edge. And we can go ahead and track this. So I'm going to leave it on sheer, not perspective, because his face isn't moving around all that much. So let's track that. So all we're doing is tracking the top part of his head so we can cover that area that the face tracker missed. Now, because we are using a planar tracker, we're going to see a little bit of a turn here in the spline over here where the plane of his face is turning around. So we can go ahead and either adjust that spline after we've finished the track, or we can just use what the face tracker did in After Effects to fill in that gap. I'm going to adjust it a little bit, and then we can bring it over to After Effects. So we can see that planar track is done now, and you can see where that spline is just moving in a little bit on the edge there, because it's captured the plane of his face, not the side of his face down here. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and fix this. And the great thing about Mocha is, is that once we've actually tracked the spline, we can still go ahead and manipulate it easily, because the tracking data is separate from the spline data. So I can go ahead and say adjust this area here and it'll create a new keyframe, but it's not gonna bounce back immediately like we saw before in After Effects because we're dealing with two separate pieces of data, track and animation keyframes for the spline. 
So I'm just going to quickly go through and now and adjust a couple of those keyframes and then we'll come back after we're done. Okay, so I've just added a few more keyframes to adjust for that head shake and now we can go ahead and export it out to After Effects. So we'll just go export shape data and we'll choose our selected layer and copy it to the clipboard. Back over in After Effects, we just go up to edit, paste mocha mask and paste it to the same layer as we had our face tracker. So we can see now we've got a nice little edge coming around here for the top of his face. And these will follow along in the same way. So if we click off our, so we can see our mask coloring, we can now see that coloring is actually covering the entirety of his face, not just the area that the mask tracker shows. So that's one area where Mocha can assist the face tracker when it's dealing with that face outline that the tracker generates. So the After Effects face tracker is still very good at tracking these kind of front on faces and generating that outline. However, if there's any kind of obstruction or the face goes out of shot slightly, then we start to run into some issues and this is where Mocha may be a better alternative. So this is another shot from Pond5, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw an outline around her face like we did with the last shot. And we've just captured all those facial features. And once again, we're going to use face tracking outline and start tracking forwards. So you'll see it captures the face quite nicely again, and we're still missing that little bit at the top. But as we get to the edge, you'll start to see the spline break up and destroy because it can no longer find the facial edges. So this is obviously a problem, and it's probably going to be a lot easier to track this quickly in Mocha. So here we have that same shot inside Mocha, and I'm just going to draw a simple shape around her face. We're going to just capture the curves of her face down to her chin here. And we'll just make sure we quickly grab all those edges, like so. And I'm going to smooth that out. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and just track with perspective on, just because she turns her face a little bit. Let's just smooth that out a bit more. And we'll go ahead and track forwards. So we can see this is tracking reasonably quickly and it's capturing all of that subtle notion of her head nodding and her face turning slightly. And as we get to the edge, you're going to see something a bit different to what happened with the face tracker. Because we're a planar tracker, we're still capturing all of this texture information and the shape is going to remain steady as her face completely goes off the shot. So this is a really, really powerful way of working because it means that you're getting all the information that you need, even though part of it is going out of shot. So another thing the facial tracker is used for is to generate features. So here I've drawn a spline around this lady's face, and again, this is a piece of footage from Pond5, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the face tracking and detailed features option instead. So as I press forwards, I'm gonna track just one frame to begin with, you can see that it generates the spline as it did previously, but now it's also creating points for the chin and cheeks and all of the facial features in the middle of the face. And this will track through the entire shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and track through that now so you can see the final result. So here we have the final track and we can see here that the face track has done a pretty good job again of tracking that face with the outline, but it's also generated these facial feature points and these can be really useful for Adobe Character Animator, but it can also be used to drive some effects on the face. And we can see here we've got a chin and a cheek and so on. So this kind of feature is really useful for if you need to do any kind of XY translation effects. So here we have the face track points effect that's generated and we can see for each point there's an X and Y. So if you need to do any kind of XY translation on the face or do generate effects from that, that is a really useful tool. However, if you need to do any patch based effects like corner pinning or sort of general warping, it's gonna be a lot harder to use these XY values because we don't have any kind of correlation to the planes of the face. And again, this is where Mocha can be really useful. We can go ahead and get into these areas where the face tracker can't track and then track in our own patches. So here we are in Mocha AE, and I'm gonna go ahead and do just that. I'm gonna go ahead and track a patch for her cheek. So I'm gonna go and draw a reasonably large shape around the side of her face, just to capture as much information as possible. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my surface grid so I can see how well that track is going. And I'm gonna specifically track in a patch here. So I'm gonna make sure this corner pin is in here. So we're going to mess up her face just a little bit inside After Effects using a new skin texture. So we'll sit that right there. And I'm going to turn on perspective because her face turns quite a lot in this shot. And we're going to go ahead and start tracking backwards. So as we track backwards, we'll see it's tracking quite quickly and it's turning correctly with her face over time. And we can see the correct distortion going on 
in her face. And this is very, very important. We're getting all of that distortion data, not just XY data. And it's capturing all of this texture information here in this skin. So once we've got finished up our track, we'll see it wrap up shortly. We now have a lovely Gwana pin to work with to patch in some additional information. So we're going to go back now over to After Effects and deal with that. So we'll export our tracking data to After Effects Corner Pin, supporting Motion Blur, and copy it to the clipboard. And let's go back over to After Effects. Back in After Effects, I've already got my skin texture ready, so I'm just going to turn on this layer here. We can see we've got this nice black and white skin texture, and this is from Rampant Design's Monster Toolkit package, which has a lot of fun textures to work with. And I'm going to come back to the start of my playhead and choose Paste. And this is going to go ahead and paste in that texture to the right spot. And you can see it's distorting correctly with her face. So I'm going to go ahead now and just fade that out a little bit. We're going to maybe use a multiply here. So it multiplies onto her skin. And finally what I want to do is actually just get a bit of a mask shape in here so that I can correctly warp it to her cheek area. So again, I could drive this mask with the original face track, but it doesn't really cover the area that I need. So I'm going to draw a separate shape inside Mocha and then attach it to her face. So let's go back over to Mocha quickly. Okay, so here we are back in Mocha and we've got our original layer that we tracked. And I've also drawn a new layer, layer two, that is going to sit on the area that we want to mask out on her cheek. So by default, this is just sitting in space because we haven't tracked it yet, but I've already tracked her face, so I don't need to do it again. I'm going to come down here to link to track, link it back to layer one, and now it's going to follow through her cheek correctly because it's absorbing that original data from the track we've already done. So we can go ahead now and export that shape data and to make a shape for AE, and I'm going to choose the selected layer and just copy it to the clipboard. And now we can go back to After Effects and paste it in. Back in Mocha, I'm going to create a new solid for this. I'm going to go New, Solid. And then I'm going to use Paste Mocha Mask to paste to that area. So now you're going to see it sit in the right spot for her face. We could paste the mask directly onto the skin texture, but because we've already got a corner pin on there, it's not going to look correct. So that's why I've created a separate layer. We can then go ahead and use the track mat for that solid. Use the alpha mat. And now it's going to sit in the right spot throughout the shot. And we're probably going to want to feather this just a little bit. So I'm going to come down to my solid and adjust the feather of that mask. And we'll probably adjust the opacity just a little bit. And just because I'm a perfectionist, I'm going to go back to those mask settings and just adjust the mask expansion a little bit. Just a little bit there and maybe a little bit more of the feathering. So let's just click off that and we'll have a look at the result without the mask turned on. And that's looking much more natural and it's distorting correctly with her face from that corner pin data. So this is just some of the areas that Mocha can complement the face tracker with when working on visual effects and touch-ups for the face. We can quickly track and fill gaps that the face tracker outline hasn't covered by providing flexible spline editing. We can track faces that are partially obscured by the edge of a shot or other occluding objects. And we can track and mask internal areas of the face with useful distortion data that would be difficult for a feature tracked area to lock onto. If you have any questions about today's overview, please go and ask us on the forums at imagineersystems.com under the support menu. Or you can email us at support at imagineersystems.com or check us out on our Facebook page. This has been Martin Brennan, Product Manager for Imagineer Systems.